ladies and gentlemen are you building your life on sand or are you building it on a rock i know that i am an eternal blessing why do i know that because god is not a man that he should lie and when he called abraham genesis chapter 12 2 and 3 he said i will bless them that bless you and curse him that curseth you and then he says thou shalt be a blessing and he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed galatians 3 29 and if ye be christ then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise everything he told abraham routed to christ Christ is my reality today so I am a blessing I cannot be a curse any nation and any place he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord every time I step into a nation I step in with a spiritual shout of Hosanna It's always a triumphant entry because it is blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord your spiritual life will change when you understand this hallelujah my life changed when I understood the character of God. Another revelation about God, that he's a lifter of men. Ayah. If you ever doubt him, look at the person speaking to you. How dare you say God does not lift? God is a lifter of men. Like he's lifting you now. I said like he's lifting you now. Doesn't matter who believes it or who does not believe it that is none of your business like he's lifting you now ah. by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your the lifter that I know my family may be the lowest but I know something about God I am not serving an unknown God my altar my devotion is not to an unknown God he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him hallelujah hear me when naysayers come to you and say you've been serving God for 20 years what is the benefit God rewards, he does not pay salary. It's salary that is monthly. God's reward may look like it's not coming, but in one day, after 20 years, even if you are Abraham, it may take 25 years. But ladies and gentlemen, when the rewarder comes, he will come with his reward and his benefits and make your life a praise to the nation. Hallelujah. For many years we served God and gave him everything and there was no comeliness and nothing in our lives that looked like God rewards but something about his character for someone you have been praying and fasting and pressing in life and ministry because God said he's giving you the mantle and the mandate of a deliverer do not allow ignorant person confuse you about this God you are serving the rewarder is on his way to you yours is to be diligent others were bribing in the office and you refused to bribe now you are feeling stupid because you would have lived in a duplex by now you would have had cars if only you cut corner I'm taking away the haziness from this God he is not an unknown God he can be known using the vista of his character you can know God by knowing his character it is true that God destroys but who does he destroy let me tell you three categories of people in the Bible that God destroys number one enemies and when God destroys enemies it's not just something that happens enemies there let me define for you who God's enemies are this is not my discussion but I want you to know <laughs> God's enemy is not just the person who fights you God's enemy is anybody who perpetually interrupts the manifestation of his will 
God's definition of an enemy is not based on sentiments or biases. You can become God's enemy if you consistently become an interruption to his will. If he loves you because he's your, you're his child, he may not judge you in terms of throwing you, but you will be edged out of the position that creates that interruption by giving your bishopric to another. This is how God works. I taught you this already, our last discussion. Are we together now? Yes. So when you say, arise and let your enemies be scattered, make sure you are not part of them first. That's why the Bible talks about righteousness, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord. Don't just pray blindly and be a victim of your prayer. You see that there's a lot of prayerfulness, but in ignorance. Many people pray amiss. You think just because you hate a man, God hates the man. You can be saying, oh God, kill that director for me now. Help me and kill this man. And God is saying, no. Even though he's not my son, he's a Cyrus that I've ordained. And for as long as this system works, it is in honor to them that he will rise. There are Cyruses who, although they are not in Christ, they have through the sincerity of their heart aligned strategically to God's program. He will not take them out. He will leave them there. Their relevance is too important. This is a mystery. In God's end time program, you will see many people who are not of the faith playing sensitive roles because the most important thing, listen, when he appeared unto Joshua, do you not read your Bible? He said, are you for us or against us? What was the answer? He said, neither. No, this is not how I walk. I am for anything that is pro my will. So he said, who is on the Lord's side? Get my message, who is on the Lord's side? You have to, before you invoke God's judgment, verify your position. Many believers have become casualties of careless prophetic speakings. Lord, destroy anybody that stops your program. Destroy anybody and God is saying, I'm warning you, you don't know what you are doing verify before moses invoked judgment he said who is on the lord's side let me give you a chance if you are for him and elijah said if god be god this way if bell god will always give an opportunity for the will of man to willfully reject him before judgment is meted upon people are we together now we see his character in nineveh again as as idolatrous and as stiff-necked and stubborn as they are he sent jonah he loved Jonah, but Jonah's life went down as a genuine prophet. You don't have to be fake to destroy. You just have to be out of the will of God. Many good people will be corruptors of God's program simply because they do not understand the power of alignment. This is not about being real or fake. This is about being, if you are Jonah, rejecting the call of God and running away, you are putting Nineveh at ransom. God wanted to met out judgment or otherwise because he sits on a throne that is made of righteousness and justice. I hope you know that the very throne God sits on is an altar. Are we together? And Jonah was delaying the manifestation. He needed to give them a chance to choose him or otherwise. And look what God, the dealing that God had to go through with Jonah. Jonah entered the belly of the fish, caused people to lose until he repented, realigned, and the same instruction again. And he went to Nineveh. Jonah's refusal was because of something about God he knew. He knew that God was merciful and he hoped that his delay would make God angry and punish because God does not forbear with iniquity indefinitely. So he was running as a strategy that the evil will continue to rise as an indignation and God will be angry and punish them. But God said, Jonah, go. And the moment Jonah spoke to them, the king said, everyone, beast and man declare fast and Jonah was angry go and read your Bible the entire discussion was the anger of Jonah he said I know you this is what I, this is a, this is why I ran because I knew that if they now repent with all this wickedness they have done you will still forgive them do you know that about God if you know that about God you can still reach your unbelieving grandfather after doing witchcraft for 35 years you can still tell him before you pass on to glory let me give you a chance to love Jesus and he says you don't know how many people have killed he said it does not matter the moment you declare the Lordship of Jesus over your life the Bible says there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness hallelujah please be seated the character of God is someone learning? 
explore the character of God as a preacher as a businessman as a family man and certain fears will die your confidence will be restored like that of uh, those who were in Bible days the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is largely powerless in conviction because there is something about the character of God we do not know number two what is the second aspect of God we must explore his ways please write his ways his ways psalm 25 4 and 5 you want to know god second to the knowledge of his character the second thing you need to understand is how he operates his character talks about who he is his ways talk about how he operates the secret to discernment in addition to the gift of discernment by the spirit is a thorough knowledge of the ways of god when you know how god you will know how he does not act show me thy ways O Lord teach me thy paths lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation on thee do I wait all day never forget this scripture Psalm 25 4 and 5 it says show me your way teach me your path ladies and gentlemen when there is inaccuracy in your representation of God and his purposes it may be derived from an inaccurate understanding as to how God works now please look up there are things God will never do even as prophetic actions number one God will never manipulate the will of men the first thing God gave man watch this now when God created man as the zenith of his creation he said let them have dominion from that time make reference to my teaching the series let them have dominion it became scripturally incorrect for God to superimpose anything upon man even at the detriment of your eternal destiny he still left you to choose you can reject him the Bible says as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him can you imagine that that god in his might full of love he's watching someone now go to hell and he's saying i give you an option you can choose me that you will leave when he set up the brazen serpent remember in the days of moses he said the instruction was to look and leave i cannot force it on you when he met the people who needed healing he asked them how do you see a man who has been impotent a man a woman with the issue of blood and all kinds of people and then asked them what they wanted let me tell you this eternally god has bound himself to respect the will of men if you notice about the way god behaves his modus operandi as a leader you will never force people and usurp upon their will whether it's in ministry or whatever it is if i want to prophesy to you you have a right as an act of your volition to say i appreciate you but i'm not ready to receive and i must respect it if i know the ways of god hallelujah leadership is very poor in africa and respectfully speaking in many many circles of the church because there is something about the modus operandi of God that we do not know and we have observed even here on this platform that one of the mistakes of the prophetic ministry is that many aside from the absence and the bankruptcy of consecration one of the mistakes of the prophetic ministry is that men and women have not subjected themselves to understand the ways of God and the prophetic by design is very complicated it is your knowledge of the ways of God that helps to define the coordinates of your seeing and your hearing so that even as a prophet you know what to reject and what to receive are we together just because you are open to the realm of the spirit does not afford you the opportunity to fish to your life and to others everything you see and hear the realm of the spirit is a vast realm it must be saved from the lens of the not just the character of God but the way God operates hallelujah so if for instance i see a revelation right now that somebody here the spirit of death is coming you see that may be an accurate revelation but just announcing to you that you are going to die i have not edified you because the the major purpose of the prophetic for exhortation are we together for comfort I, I, that that purpose has been defeated in what i'm saying i leave you with fear i leave you with doubt i have not helped you 
and because we have been called corporately as believers to the ministry of reconciliation the bible says it is not god's desire that even the wicked should perish but that everyone would come to the saving knowledge of jesus that must inform my administration of the prophetic so having declared to you what i see that the devil wants to do i must now use scripture and show you a recommended path of obedience that leads to your victory hallelujah are we together thank you for watching and hope you'll be blessed by this message hit the subscribe button for more of our latest videos and don't forget to share in order to bless someone. See you in the next.